Okay, we'll start. Hello, hello everybody. Good evening. So today's session, I thought I'll introduce one. Uh, uh, actually, I came across this library uh, quite recently, and I found it pretty useful. So I thought I'll share my experience of uh, discovering this library uh, because it 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 solves one important critical problem for um, the class of people like you know freelancers, developers who are working on their own, people with startup ideas, but who are aiming to target uh, big. enterprises as their customers so one of the critical uh, entry points that we get stuck in you know when you have a new product a promising product and you want to make a uh, impression on a big corporate client the first uh, barrier for entry is um, uh, their security network so they will have elaborate security it can be it uh, depends depends on whether they are on the private cloud or public cloud or they have uh, salesforce based or they have uh, you never know they have their own system they have, we, have, we have no idea each one has his own com complicated security network so uh, this library uh, which is called keycloak which is actually developed by a red hat it is open source and this is a, a, an easy way out for startups and small developers to try and bridge the gap between their products their applications and the big enterprise networks out there not just enterprise networks even social networks for example uh, you want to add um, uh, you have developed a page and you want um, you don't want to have uh, you let's say you have some precious see security is all of, always about safeguarding a precious resource right so uh, the enterprise network may have its own precious resources at the same time my product also may have some precious resources which i want to safeguard from unauthorized users so the idea of using this kind of a library is if you integrate keycloak into your uh, product let's say one is you can bypass the uh, login procedure of your product by directly plugging in this product into the enterprise network of your client another way of doing it is you can use a uh, pre authentication available through google uh, uh, your login password or facebook login password so or um, stack overflow or any other application your user may already be authenticated through one of these applications and through that if you want to log into your system then you can also uh, use keycloak for that so its main purpose is to allow a user to plug in their own applications into enterprise networks either through corporate security networks or through social media networks so i'm just going to give you a brief on this library today uh about myself just a two lines so um i i'm a corporate trainer who does um, uh, technical training for colleges institutes various subjects and i also do blogging and uh, i am also associated with devopedia for a while now for four five years now uh this uh, uh, statistic is about devopedia uh, uh, steady growth in the uh, especially with respect to the articles that we have been uh, supporting on the in the internet so uh, there is another side of devopedia activity that is the tech talks and training sessions which is what we are part of today but our main focus has been over the years been the article part and we have covered uh, about uh, 300 350 articles and uh, these articles are free of course and we welcome our uh, community at large to contribute to these articles on any subject of their choice wherever their expertise lies so that's about devopedia now let me come to a quick summary of keycloak so uh, as i i uh, was uh, stressing on the idea is to plug in your application into an enterprise network using single sign on so i don't want to open my own uh, uh, my application also may have a login and password why not if i don't have an enterprise network to plug into if i am developing a standalone solution for a small guy uh, a very small entrepreneur or a or a one man uh, one man kind of company then he may have, he may need a very simplistic login password kind of authentication system i can give him that or if there is an existing large enterprise such as a corporate or a government office or a private institution they already have their elaborate security system so i deploy my product into their network using their own network infrastructure security infrastructure so keycloak is basically an open source identity and access management platform so access management is about authorization identity management is about authentication so basically keycloak allows you both for instance a startup can build a third party application and deploy it into their customers enterprise network by integrating their application with the keycloak library 
incidentally keyclock has its own gui where you can configure usernames and passwords and you know authentication based on otp username uh, username password based or um, based on mobile otp based on email e verification fingerprint verification all these uh, popular authentication methods that are there presently they are all already supported in keyclock so your application it's up to you and it can, for example if you have a mobile app you want to do a fingerprint authentication allowed so that is the kind of flexibility that this library gives us and as you can see uh, in the picture there is a, a url which is uh, going around uh, basically it's a redirection kind of a url uh, there are two things that we can note from that picture uh, on the right side a uh, very very simple two things you just park this thought i'll come back to this point later okay one thing you can see is the local host 8443 which is a redirect url basically when your application is trying to log in using a username password you redirect it to a keyclock server the keyclock will give you back some id access tokens and do using those tokens you can uh, bypass the security system of the existing enterprise network this is the idea how it works i will tell you more in detail so the idea of uh, uh, single sign on is not directly implemented using uh, the authentication of username password as it is because it doesn't have to be username password it can be otp fingerprint it can be anything the idea is you authenticate yourself to some guy, some guy who is doing an identity management service for you it can be anybody it can be the corporate security network it can be google it can be facebook anybody who is going to verify your username password you verify your user credentials for you when you send your packet to him with all your credentials he will send back an uh, access token saying okay boss i have verified you you seem to be a genuine user you can go ahead now hereafter all your interactions with the enterprise network will be using this access token so you don't have to pass on your credentials every time the access token is like a key to enter into the network of your enterprise customer okay so just a small summary about keyclock uh, it's it's a fairly recent library it's about 20, 2014 was its first release but it's become a mature product only since 2018 and um, uh, this uh, actually was developed uh, by red hat uh, using uh, basically their uh, uh, sso they had a, their own single sign on internal project which they later spun off as an independent library and and uh, when uh, they had this jboss uh, server which was plugged in no as part of the apache license that is when they decided that uh, uh, it is seems to be fairly independent and it can be used by anybody so that is when it was spun off as an independent library and uh, yeah, i'll give you more information about the uh, features in just a moment uh, keyclock is now considered as a replacement for the sso open source uh, setup of jboss okay so and it's it's free it's open source Okay. Uh, this picture gives you a very brief on uh, some of the important features supported by Keyclock, and I'll show you a small demo also. Uh, that will give you an easier idea of uh, you know how how things are. Actually, it's a fairly simple system. It's not it's not um, it's not something that you know uh, that involves too much of coding. In fact, most of these present day libraries they have. on this one factor right they want very little or no code when they uh, talk about system integration so again this is a keyclock is also another library where there is very little or very if at all there is coding it's only json configuration and that sort of a thing hardly any coding involved okay so the principal features supported by keyclock are the single sign on so you can log into multiple applications through the um, authentication network once it is uh, identified by either the enterprise security or a social media security system the main protocols used for authentication are again all open source protocols there is something called an open id connect that is oidc then there is oauth which is an open source authentication protocol and there is something called saml saml is an identity brokering protocol i'll give you a small brief about these three protocols in the um, subsequent slides there is a centralized management system basically they they give you a gui where you can add users delete users add roles for them give permissions set policies for different different functions user functions x user can only view y user can do view and delete and add so that kind of a role based authorization is also possible using simple configurations in keyclock it has some adapters for um, uh, 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 plugging in into various different networks i will show you what are all the adapters uh the uh, one of the biggest advantages of keycloak is it uh, allows you to seamlessly plug into existing 
uh, directories where your user data may be stored. So you may already have an LDAP with your system. It may be Microsoft based into Azure, into AWS, whatever kind of directory profile you have for your user directory. You can um, just plug into Keycloak just using a simple configuration system. And then, of course, he's talking about enabling social media login. As I was telling you, you can use Google security, Facebook security to bypass your own security. And this uh, we have seen this feature in so many of the products that we use today. Identity brokering is what it is called. OK, identity brokering simply means you have a broker. The broker can be a social media uh, giant or it can be an enterprise network giant. Whoever he is, he will do the brokering for you. He will verify the authentication of the user um, credentials. You don't have to do it yourself. It's fairly uh, lightweight for the kind of flexibility it offers. And it is uh, uh, this uh, slide I have taken directly from Keycloak's website, but I would like to add a caveat here. It says it is scalable. It is true. It is scalable. But when we talk about, you know, a massive enterprise network scale operation like, you know, plugging into um, Google or plugging into Salesforce. And let's say I have a huge I'm, I'm selling my product to some sale, a huge multinational bank and I have millions of customers, so many network uh, branches and all that. That kind of a scaling Keycloak has not yet been tested because it's fairly new when it has the community project is fairly new. So most of the places where Keycloak is used are startups plugging into their product into enterprise networks. The enterprise network, which is you know very widespread across countries, thousands of people logging at the same time. This kind of use case is just being tested. There are some reports of issues of uh, uh, um, load balancing issues and all coming up. But at the same time, for our kind of basic entry entry level use case, it is perfect. I have used it myself. It's very comfortable. And of course, it, it supports scalability and uh, clustering and all because it simply plugs into your existing cloud, your uh, private cloud, public cloud. I have deployed it in AWS. It's comfortable, no issues at all in configuration. It, it's seamless. It has a very um, uh, simple user interface. And uh, when I show you the user interface, you'll appreciate it. Uh, even a person who is not comfortable with security management, who is not familiar with authorization authentication part, you know, because there are many startups out there who are good in their business area, in their product area, but they are not comfortable with these kind of extra features like, you know, scaling and uh, um, security and those kind of things. So for uh, for such customers also, uh, this uh, user interface is very intuitive, pretty simple. And uh, uh, the different password policies and all that, I will show you those. OK, so that there are two main components of Keycloak. One is the server itself. And uh, uh, incidentally, there are two ways of accessing the server. One is using the API network. So the APIs are all REST, REST APIs. So uh, if let us say I have, I have developed a startup, uh, I'll give you an example. I've, I, have, I have taken this example in the slides also. I'll give you an example. Let's say I am I am uh, I have a brilliant product idea, which is a fintech startup. OK, I'll have, uh, in fact, I can take uh, I'll take Ram's example. He has a lot of brilliant ideas about um, uh, statistical uh, analysis, data packages and all that. So let's see. Let's say he has developed one such uh, product, which is a super duper uh, application, which will find a lot of value in, uh, say, uh, a banking system or an NBFC or insurance anywhere in the fi in the finance sector. Now he has a he knows he has a trump card product, but how does he penetrate his customer? The first problem he will face is the customer will say, "Boss, I am sitting on massive amounts of confidential user information: their banking details, credentials, money, and insurance policies, blah blah blah." So fintech is a is a sector where you are paranoid about security, right? So how does a new customer? How does a, um, a startup? like uh, Ram's product enter into this network. What will he do? So what he can do is he can plug in Keycloak into let us say he's deploying his uh, server in AWS or Azure. He can deploy a, um, a redirect server on Keycloak and he will give, simply go to his customer and say, boss, you are interested. You are you are interested in my product. Very good. No problem. I will simply support whatever authentication is there in your system. I will support it in my system also. And it is single sign on, so it will be seamless. You won't even notice that my product is part of your network. So that is the uh, biggest advantage you get out of this. And for this, there are two ways of doing it. If the customer is comfortable with using the GUI provided by Keycloak itself, well and good. They can do the user configuration there if he wants to. 
otherwise he says no no user creation deletion giving roles access service blah 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 creating groups these kind of things i don't want to do in your system i want to do it in my own system very good no problem he can use the rest apis and he can plug in keyclock only as a backend server okay and there are a set of adapters especially for uh, plugging into these identity brokers such as google and uh, facebook etc okay i think uh, uh, I, i let me quickly do one thing i'll take you to the uh, website of uh, are you still able to see my screen yeah yes ma'am yeah you're able to see my uh, browser now which says uh, keyclock yeah, i've just opened keyclock's home page not the browser not no, the browser, the browser. Just, just give me a sec huh? i'll open the browser Okay. The sharing window is gone again, Arvind. Jerry, can you just check? I'm not able to share. No, because uh, it's, coming. it's coming. Yeah, it was it was disabled for a second. It's come back. Okay. Yeah, I can see the browser now. You can see now. Okay. Okay. Can you see this now? Yeah. Okay. so i am i'm just actually uh, uh, sorry uh, this is just a lazy way of doing things i have not put all the information onto the ppt that's why i'm just opening the website so that some feature list we can quickly see on the home page itself okay so single sign on is the first thing that we talked about they all uh, we have covered that identity brokering as i told you uh, that uh, the open source um, uh, uh, so protocols that they support are open id and saml i will show you a small brief about these protocols then the uh, user federation is basically a concept they uh, refer to the uh, ldap or the active directory services and keyclock provides its own admin console so um, when i uh, i'll probably do one thing i'll parallelly show you the screen of my keyclock also can you see this can you see my uh, keyclock setup yep yep yeah. so uh, on the left side can you see what are all the different entities that you are uh, able to see on uh, keyclock so yes. the first concept is called a realm okay so what he means by realm is the the universe in which my product is operating so uh, my product is let's say i am uh, i am targeting a bank okay so, so i am targeting a customer called abc bank so what will i do i just go here and i'll say add realm okay i am i am deploying a, a new product so i'll say abc bank i'll create a new realm okay and i'm not doing it now because this is a customers network so uh, i will create a, a, a realm called abc bank then what will i do i will simply uh, open his uh, roles okay can you see there is something called a client okay in keyclock what he means by client is basically all the different uh, 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 web interfaces or mobile interfaces or different ways different entry points into into your product you want to support a mobile app you want to support um, a browser based uh, uh, application or you want to support a standalone application uh, or you you are having a demo client only for a short term purpose maybe a trial license uh, where you don't have to verify his credentials and all that sab kuch chalta hai you can give him permission for everything but only for 10 days 4 days so different different kinds of clients you may want to expose to the customer so each of these clients can be configured here in keyclock i'll show show you one uh, such client that i have configured so this client he has his own credentials what are the client's credentials what are all the different uh, roles that these clients can have uh, i'll show you some roles which i have configured what sort of authorization is supported so which policy which uh, what uh, what are the resources that, that you are trying to protect then the policies and permissions that you want to uh, set for example i'll show you something i'll this is some there is something called a demo trial policy what do i mean by demo trial policy i am giving full access to the system you bypass any login username password don't ask him any questions but for how long only for two months so this is called a demo trial policy so what will happen if you give a user uh, the permission to log in using the demo trial policy i create a user i create a user called anu and that anu user is having permission to use the demo trial policy what will happen now for two months anu can access the system without any questions asked after two months automatically my rights will be removed okay so this kind of flexibility is given to you simply by configuration of this admin console 
Now let me go back to the PPT. As and when we cover a slide, I'll come back to the demo so that you'll be able to map things manually. Okay. Okay. Now let's first target the first aspect of Keycloak, that is the authentication part. Authentication means checking who you are, whether you are a valid user or not. Most websites use login and password based authentication, but in Keycloak you can do uh, email OTP, you can do uh, uh, mobile OTP, you can do uh, this one, a fingerprint, uh, your iris check, blah, 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 everything. Whatever is there in the system now, you, you have all the two-factor authentication. Everything is allowed. Everything is supported. Keycloak allows a plugin of various identity providers. They can be configured in the admin console. I will show you the identity providers just now. Okay. I'm going to the browser again. These are my identity providers. Okay, so I want to add an identity provider. Who is the identity provider I want to add? In my corporate network may be uh, having, see for example, when I say corporate network, you take, um, as if, my, if my system is deployed in AWS or if my system is deployed in Azure, or these, uh, uh, these systems are also co uh, compliant with um, OpenID. OpenID and um, uh, SAML. Even, uh, for example, even Salesforce is compliant to this. So if users are using CRM products like that, no problem. They can simply configure their uh, OpenID Connect or SAML credentials. Otherwise, I want to use some uh, credentials from social media, GitHub, Facebook, Google, Instagram, LinkedIn, Microsoft, blah, blah, blah. All these kind of different, different social media identity providers are supported. So what do I mean? Let's say I want to use, uh, I want to bypass my uh, uh, login password by using LinkedIn as an identity provider. So what happens? You give LinkedIn client ID, LinkedIn all your details, your email ID, blah, blah, blah. So many different pa parameters that it's asked for. And you give a redirect URL. What will happen? When the login happens, it will redirect it to the credentials identity broker within LinkedIn. It will check whether you are a valid LinkedIn user. And if once LinkedIn authentic authenticates you, it will come back and say, okay, you are a valid user. So that's what he means by you can configure the different um, uh, identity providers using the admin console. So uh, this picture is actually a very simplistic way of understanding things. You have a fellow who is trying to access the front end. Uh, he doesn't directly access the system. Instead, what he does, he first his first uh, touch point is Keycloak. He will send a uh, he will send a redirect URL into Keycloak, which is uh, as you can see, there is a uh, URL here, auth.reverse.in. This is my redirect URL into Keycloak from my customer's website. So then you go to this, you enter your, you, you verify your uh, Keycloak or username, password, and Keycloak will say, okay, boss, you are a valid user. I'm giving you an access token. You use that access token, and hereafter, all your transactions with the backend are happening using that token. And all the web information that you collect from your backend regarding the resources, how they need to be protected, what roles are allowed, what authorization is allowed, everything is controlled using JSON files. Okay, so this is a very simplistic way of understanding things. Okay, now I'll go to the next slide. I'll probably do a, yeah. Okay, so I, this is just a brief about the different uh, authorization and authentication protocols. And uh, again, I'm I'm uh, going to apologize for what I've done, which is a very lazy man's job. I've simply taken the brief description from Wikipedia because I thought in one hour, we won't have time to uh, understand any of these protocols in detail. So I just wanted to give a very, very quick glance about them. Those who are interested, I can share material later for reference or we can even have a subsequent session because some of these protocols are fascinating in themselves. They can, uh, they actually warrant a good session of their own. Today, we'll just try to understand them in very, very brief. One of the first protocols that it supports is OpenID. So OpenID is basically used to authenticate cooperating sites using third party identity providers. The idea is you don't need webmasters to provide their own ad hoc locking systems. You can users can simply use unrelated websites without having any separate identity or password for each of them. So you are, uh, let's say you're, uh, especially corporate networks, they will be having multiple products deployed by multiple vendors. So if you want to have seamless login password uh, to, you know, uh, move across different vendors, different products, uh, then you can use Keycloak to act as a bridge server between all of them. Users create accounts by uh, selecting an open identity provider. That's what we did. It can be Twitter, it can be Facebook, it can be anybody. Several large organizations either issue or accept open IDs on their websites. Several websites allow users to log into their system using third party credentials. You yourself must have seen many places where you try to log in. He says, uh, do you want to sign up, sign up with me? Or do you want to simply sign in using Google or simply sign up using uh, your Facebook ID? 
we say uh, sometimes we are lazy we don't want to create a new set of username passwords because we'll forget so we'd simply tell that fellow okay boss you use uh, the, my existing credentials from google that's what we do many of the times so this is exactly a single sign on experience of course, there is a security element involved here. There is a, a data sharing element involved here, which brings in a certain amount of risk. We'll cover the risk part a little later. So the identity providers are integrated using the SAM protocol, and this defines the interaction between the human user, the identity provider, and the service provider. Okay, so this is just an example screen. So you're trying to log into Pinterest. He says, uh, do you want to log up, create a my URL ID? You want to sign up, or you don't want to do all that. You simply sign in using Google account. So he says, of course, my browser is already uh, aware of my Google credentials. So he says, you simply uh, say continue. It will ask you to sign in through Google. It will ask you for your, um, uh, it'll, uh, it'll take your username, password, and it will pass it to Pinterest saying, okay, I have authenticated this person. You can go ahead. So the, in fact, uh, all the websites where you have seen this feature, most of them are implemented using this kind of a network surface. Okay, next comes the next protocol, which is uh, OAuth. Actually, OAuth 2.0 is more uh, comprehensive. Um, OAuth, it's an authorization protocol, actually. It is a pseudo authorization protocol. Actually, why, I will tell you why we call it that. Because it is mainly about consent. It is mainly about verifying whether you, are, uh, you have a valid role in this system or not. The moment we talk about role and permission and access and those kind of terms are belonging to the authorization domain, not the authentication domain. Authentication simply checks whether you are a valid user or not. But OAuth is a system that is a kind of a bridge between the authorization and the authentication part of a security system. So it is complementary. At the same time, it is different from OpenID, the pre previous protocol which we saw. Okay. The user requests, I, I've just given a, a simple uh, flowchart kind of thing on the sequence of operations because I didn't want to describe the details on the protocol that you will not even remember now. So I just wanted to give you a brief flow of how the uh, activity happens. The user requests for a login to any site. The site checks that the user is not yet authenticated. So it forms a request URL, sends it to the identity provider that will get encoded and it sends it to the user as part of a redirect URL. Now, the user's browser will take that redirect URL and we'll send it to uh, we'll send it to the application uh, as a request. Now, what will happen? The identity provider uh, to whom the redirect URL has been sent, he will do the verification. It may be Twitter, it may be Facebook, it may be my enterprise corporate network, it may be whoever it is. He will check for my credentials, username, password, OTP, whatever it is. He will check all those things. And the identity provider is satisfied. Achha, okay, I'm convinced this fellow is a valid user. He will process the application's request and he will send you the uh, uh, response. And that response will contain the access token, which will act as your key to enter into the system hereafter. The user's browser will request the uh, uh, redirect URL to uh, uh, decode the uh, identity provider's response. And that will decide whether you should be allowed or denied entry. The response includes an access token and the application can use that to hereafter to gain and uh, support you for the user's behalf. So this is the flow. Uh, what, the format of an access token, it, it's, it's a simple um, um, uh, binary code. So uh, and again, it, it follows the cookie logic. You can be, it can be stored and it can be, um, uh, it can be shared, all those things. OK, so uh, this is just a small, simple picture with how it looks. Uh, so your application, Android app, it may be mobile app, it may be a web application. It will ask, it's asking for a, the, I didn't, uh, the access token is more like a key. It gives the uh, account so that, uh, uh, that it proves, you first prove that you are the owner of the house. Then you issue the uh, valid key for the APIs. The key comes back to you. And hereafter, you use the key to directly access the application. So this is the idea of using uh, OAuth. So as I said, it is called a pseudo authentication protocol because it does authentication using the concept of authorization. OK, now we come to the actual authorization. OK, before we do that, I'll probably show you the different uh, authentication uh, features in Keycloak. So authentication will come to the authentication window. In authentication, as you can see, you can define your company's OTP policy, the OTP number of digits in the OTP, then how, how, how what is the duration I should wait, then uh, what is the password policy, uh, you can create and uh, when I say policy, see there is a, these are all predefined password policies, whether it is 
hash algorithms or um, at least recently used regular expression whatever it is it should be a username it cannot be username it cannot be email all these are predefined uh, policies supported by keyglo let us say i have a, a unique uh, password policy which does not fall into any of these categories no problem you can simply create your own policy using a json file and upload keyglo allows you to customize the policy at any stage either you can upload the entire um, security uh, framework using an entire um, json so that if you are say let us say you are deploying uh, uh, your product into a new customers framework from uh, you are presently it's in india branch tomorrow you want to export your device into some other company some other country's branch you simply export all the, see you can see the import export here you do all the configurations here and you export the security credentials all these things roles clients groups users everything will get saved into a json file I think I have opened the JSON file also. You can see that. Yeah, this is how the JSON file will look. So there, this is the uh, different roles, different. This is a RIM. The name of the RIM has something. Then the users, the different clients, users, roles. Everything will come into the JSON file. So, uh, for yes. example, this client role is supported, not supported. So all these things can be configured using a JSON file. Once you do that, this looks like a generated one. Okay, you exported yes, it. Yes, I, I have exported. This is my uh, JSON. I just wanted to show you them. When you export, okay. how it is. Okay. So okay, this is fine. one of the customers' thing. I just wanted to show you, just to show you, just to give you an idea. That's nice. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so the same thing you can do. You can go to some other network. Let's say you have deployed the uh, your one customer. You have done. Uh, you are doing well. You want to give a demo to another customer. Simply take the existing JSON, import it, and you create a parallel system. So the configuration aspect doesn't have to be reported every time. It can simply be used as a JSON because there are some features. For example, creating users. For example, let's say I am trying to create the number of users. As you can see, I have created some users, right? I have created my name. So for a small company, small client, he has only eight customers, ten customers. Okay, you can sit and do this manually. But let us say I am targeting a corporate client like a bank or an NBFC or insurance company. He will have hundreds, thousands of users. I he don't want to sit and manually do this, right? So what I will do? I will take the enterprise network data, create a JSON file for it, and simply upload the JSON file so that all the users will get uploaded using the JSON. You don't have to manually do it. So there are APIs available for it. Okay, now let me come to. I think I've shown that identity provider. I've shown. Have I shown user federation? I think I've shown no. Okay, user federation is depending on LDAP or whatever directory server you want to use. Okay, I, uh, uh, when we come to authorization, I will come to roles and policies and all that. Okay, so I've shown this. Now let me go back to the PPT. Okay, now we'll start talking about authorization. We are done with the authentication part. We'll start talking about authorization. In authorization, uh, basically the idea is like a maintaining an access control list. So authorization in Keycloak is simply role based. So you grant permissions, allow or deny based on some role. Okay. So I have taken an example. Uh, basically, I am just going to extend the same example of Ram's fintech product, and I will give you a, a basic idea of um, you know how it can be configured, like a simple example. Okay. Keycloak allows fine grained definition of resources, user roles, permissions, policies, clients, and groups. So here I've used different words, different entities in the authorization system. Each of these have a specific purpose, specific uh, 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 meaning, and I will be defining each of these terms in the next slide. There, I have also attached a, a useful blog for those who are further interested in how to go in about this, because the permissions and controls, uh, policies, uh, configuration is it's not difficult, but it's tedious. It takes time. So that is why for those who are more interested in uh, delving deeper into this, I have attached the example of a Stack Overflow blog. This uh, one fellow has given a very nice step by step way of uh, doing the configurations. By the way, Keycloak does not always have to be configured into a cloud, cloud setup. It can be simply downloaded onto your Windows PC and tested on a local PC. It doesn't require network configuration at all. So if you are doing it on a very very basic purpose, demo purpose, you can do it on your own PC. You don't need network at all. Okay. So now I'm coming to the different entities. Whatever entities I'm talking about here, I've defined all of them as a one-line example. So uh, what is a RIM? I've already shown you, right? The RIM is I'm I'm targeting a banking customer. 
So what is the RIAM? The RIAM is uh, HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank. That is my RIAM. Okay. Or maybe my bank fellow says, no, no, don't treat the entire corporate network as one RIAM. You give one installation, one setup per branch. So I will say State Bank of India Indira Nagar branch or HDFC Marathalli branch as one RIAM. Why not? Depending on the customer's choice. Whatever is the scope, the universe of your security system, that is your RIAM. Next is the client. The client can be a mobile app, it can be a uh, admin console, it can be command line, it can whatever it is. It can be a website, it can be a, it can be a, a, a local desktop app also without any network credentials. That's also fine. Then comes roles. How do you configure roles? Roles are something which is very very uh, local to the business domain, right? So if we are talking about a, a, a corporate a company like a logistics company, let's say I want to configure. Um, uh, this product in some um, LNT or you know some some big company uh, which has multiple branches and Tata Group and all those kind of people. So the kind of different roles they will have a CEO, manager, supervisor, operator, desktop operator, this guy, legal department, uh, that department, finance, HR manager, so many roles. All those roles can be configured. Ultimately, authorization is simply about safeguarding a resource. So the central concept in Keycloak is. You have a user, you have a resource. So the user is a valid guy. Okay, authentication done. Now, the resource is a precious resource. Is this user to be given access to that resource or not? And if he has to be given access, what is the gradation of access that he can be given? He is allowed only view access. He can modify. He can delete also. He can rename, blah, blah, blah. Different, different, different gradations of access can be defined for each resource. So the resource can be what? Depending on the domain. If the domain is a fin fintech domain, uh, the, resor the resources to be uh, safeguarded are e-wallets, contracts. If it is a Netflix or an Amazon Prime kind of system which I am ta targeting, then the media files, the movies, uh, those kind of things. So uh, doc or uh, supposing I want to sell my product to a legal domain, all the contracts, documents, those are my resources. So depending on where you are selling your product, where what is the resource you want to safeguard, those are all to be configured in Keycloak as the different various resources. Now, I'll go back to the GUI. I'm going to the resources part, okay? So now I'm going to the authentication. No, sorry, I have to go to the client. I have to go to one particular client, any one client, okay? And I have to go to the authorization window of that client, okay? In authorization, as you, you can see some resources that I have configured. So this I've done manually, just uh, um, I've not shown you, I'm not showing the full system, I'm showing only a demo system. So this system has been deployed for a documentation, document management software. So they are trying to safeguard their documents, which are all confidential contracts. So these contracts are all the different resources that he is trying to safeguard. Where is the document stored? What is the um, um, URL? That is what is the resource that I'm protecting. What is the type of the resource? So the type of the resource is some categorization which you can give on your own. There is no um, existing categorization for that. If you are doing a Netflix kind of thing, you can say it's a movie, it's a, a web series, it's a live TV, blah, 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 whatever it is. You can have different categories of your resources. Then we go back to the PPT. Okay. Then we have uh, policies and permissions. So policies and permissions again belong to the business domain. So an operator is a user who can only view a resource, whereas a manager is a guy who has higher roles, higher credentials, he can edit the resource. So these kind of things can be configured in Keycloak as a combination of policies and permissions. And uh, uh, this is simply like a um, uh, access control list. So you define all the different user functions that your system supports, view report, add report, delete reports, like all your cred, CRUD functions. Then you say rename, share, uh, send by email, export, import, whatever functions you may have. You, you define that a user X has permission, user Y has permission, depending on the role that he performs. So if a user has two roles, he is a viewer also, he is a manager also, then the higher credentials are applied and you will get permission to your access your resource. There is also concept of group in Keycloak where your organizational hierarchy can be uh, combined with the uh, policies and permissions. So for example, let us say Anuradha is a user who is a manager in the finance department. So in all documents which belong to the finance department of my organization, I have full control. I can read, I can edit, I can do whatever I want. Whereas 
if a document belongs to the say logistics department or engineering department i don't have even open access i cannot even touch those documents so by having a group hierarchy you can give user selective permission for some sections of your resources then you have your various users you can configure and then the identity provider these are the different important entities so i have taken the same entities and i am extending ram's uh, example and i am just going to give you a a uh, 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 use case for all these uh, one one typical example so what is my product my product is a fintech application i want to sell it to banks insurance companies nbfcs etc my problem is my customers have a very tight security system in their corporate network they want products to comply with their security so they don't want to log in through my application again separately because every time they want to access something let us say they want to access netflix every time they don't want to log into netflix they want to come through their own corporate network so they want seamless access so the rem i create in the name of the company the different uh, uh, website the web access interfaces mobile apps command consoles whatever it is then the users anu arvin ram you can have 100 users if there are 3 or 4 you do it manually using keycloaks admin console if there are hundreds you use you upload using a json file so you can configure different roles depending on your customers network whatever is you whatever is the dictionary that is followed in their customers network you follow the same you configure them then the policies can be configured as a viewer policy editor policy admin policy what is the viewer policy he can view the document he can print the document he can share the document whereas a editor policy is he can view also he can edit also he can delete also he can rename also so this kind of policy you can define group can be the entire organization so if i if let us say anu is the ceo uh, so i will have organization level access i can open any document but anu is only a, a employee of hr department i can only watch documents in the hr this kind of uh, permission policy network can be used uh, for doing integrating your product with the basic authorization services so that i'll go back to the application and we'll see a few more things uh, maybe we'll spend another 5 minutes to see some other features and then i'll open the house to questions because uh, beyond this if i have to give you examples uh, i'll have to actually start uh, tracing the entire customers uh, you know uh, setup network setup and we don't have time for that so if people are interested we can do a subsequent session on this because it's a very vast topic so i am just going to show you some things at random okay i have defined some policies so i have defined something called a legal and compliance policy that is this policy is applicable only for the legal and compliance department so in this what happens you have if you have if you are if you are belonging if your user belongs to the legal and compliance department of your see the organization has these groups organization level loans and disbursement legal and compliance hr so if you are if you are an employee who belongs to the legal and compliance department or any groups which are subsequent to that sub groups you will have access otherwise you will not access for the rest so this kind of policy i can define based on groups then i can define policies based on time period i told you demo so this is based on policy based on time period beyond all this you can even have policies based on some regular expression some uh, combination which you want to verify then you can also have aggregate policies a policy which is a combination of a role based policy and a time based policy you can have those kind of aggregate policies permissions then a uh, resources i have already shown then what else is important let me go to groups okay these are the groups i can uh, just create a group that's it set group uh, parameters for this in this group let's say uh, there are, there are only four functions there is a function called view doc is allowed and edit doc is not allowed no something like this you can create a thing like this okay name value pair then user sessions can be monitored and then import and export i have already shown okay so this is the basic demo part i think i'm done with most of the things i think we'll spend at least 10 minutes on questions So I am throwing the session open now. You are welcome to ask questions. Thanks, Anuradha, for the session. It was very useful. I have one question. Uh, if it is one-time load, we do it using import. 
uh, ongoing basis if somebody has to do it programmatically i remember you spoke about apis is yes. there a documentation of apis somewhere yes yes, the... yes it has good uh, actually there is one there is only one problem with uh, keycloak uh, ram they have uh, very poor uh, tutorials okay so most okay. of the information you get are from medium blogs and uh, uh, there are one or two youtube videos and uh, the mm -hmm. thing is uh, when we have a uh, uh, i'll i'll share whatever you have uh, thing i have access to there are a good uh, documentation for the rest apis okay that part is good okay and uh, there okay. are uh, there are sample examples also of how to use the rest apis to uh, bypass the gui and directly plug in the uh, keycloak server to your system but there is a lot there is a lot of problem of versioning that is the documentation has not been up, uh, updated to the recent uh, uh, releases of keycloak so sometimes okay. what happens is the api would have changed but the documentation will be talking about some other input parameter so that okay. is the only problem i have found so but how did you manage to overcome that uh, uh, how do you manage to overcome that uh, there there are some forums where you go and post your uh, uh, keycloak has a lot of the community forums okay. and even in stack overflow people are very strong on keycloak and there are two okay. three fellows who are in red hat who are doing active blogging on keycloak okay and they are also supportive actually so uh, there are some people who give their email id you can write to them that sort of a thing so oh, if it's okay. all happening on a very haphazard way they don't have still a proper you know uh, well defined support network okay so that That's is one of the reasons why i said uh, i i still uh, one point i missed no i said i will come to the problems the problems hmm. first problem is support poor support because it is not yet uh, matured into a, a community project which is being used by huge guys it's being used by small time developers startups those kind of guys huge hmm. enterprise customers have still not you know taken to it in a big way probably because it's okay. new it's only 2 years old but the thing yeah. is because of that uh, the support uh, documentation is the first problem and uh, release versioning is pretty decent in the last 6 or 7 months there is a lot of uh, upgrades happening but uh, during the covid period you know there were there were many upgrades so there were a lot of errors reported but people were not updating the libraries the second yeah. problem is as i told you scalability when you have uh, many people have said until 1000 users parallel logging and all we have tested beyond that hands up i don't know whether it will work or not that kind of a thing you know so nobody hmm. has tested it for large deployment hmm. so these are the second problem okay that helps thanks others have any question please yeah so what we have to do or to configure the application request to be forwarded to keycloak um you, you just have to give the redirect url see uh, i'll show you So, uh, you remember in the first slide I showed you a uh, uh, URL. 8443 is the port. You just configure Keycloak either in your local device. You can uh, install Keycloak either in your local device or you install it into your cloud setup. Whether it is AWS or I think I can show you that also if possible. I'll show you to my AWS console and I can show you the configuration. I'm not sure whether it's up. I think today it was supposed to be down for maintenance. I'll try to log in. Yeah, I think today they were planning to do a maintenance, so it's it's down. No problem. I'll just explain it orally. So here you can uh, deploy Keycloak here. Uh, for this, the deployment part, the network, the documentation is good. You just deploy it in your AWS or Azure, and uh, the the redirect uh, port is eight four four three. And you uh, 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 first to start with, it's better to start with your local PC. You'll get a hang of things. Just install it in your local PC. Configure a one dummy username password and get on. That's the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, you can uh, directly use the. Uh, there is a, there is a manual. I think the. I, I, I'll do one thing now. There is a configuration manual. There is a, a startup guide and all this. Those things I will add to the PPT and I will explain to it. 
so that for common resources easy points you get it there uh oh, my question was different my question was like let's say i have an application uh -huh. i i want to authorize authenticate everything uh -huh. so that application on the request how i will be redirecting that to now my like it log is up and running everything yes. is done now my application has to redirect the request to kick log for verification correct let's say this is authenticated or not correct so that client part uh, how talks to the server can part of the kick can you see can you see this url in the slide yeah yeah this is the redirect url so when i say uh, well, let us say uh, the you have you you are trying to log into some customer network it is icici bank dot some something yeah. something dot login they will they will have to add this as the redirect url for whenever they want to use let us say in icici bank there is a button where there is a facility to open rams application he clicks that button and i want rams application to open but i want to bypass the authentication single sign on so what will happen rams application will not be directly configured um, the url will not be directly configured in icici bank this url will be configured which is the key clocks redirect url so uh, you remember i showed you one picture this So from the front end, let us say the front end is ICIC Bank's uh, uh, front end. From there, you will go to Keycloak's redirect URL, which is the URL I showed you. And from there, you get an access token. Only then you access the actual backend. The actual backend is RAM's system. Okay, so okay, redirect URL will be token. Then once redirect URL gives you a valid token, then we have to write again another URL to redirect to the backend. Correct. Correct. And that you are. URL is a hidden resource because it's a it's a protected resource. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah. That this is means like how the other uh, other authentication works the same thing. Yeah. The idea is the same. It's only that the only advantage this guy has two. There are two advantages this guy has. It is a no code framework. You don't have to you don't have to be a developer. And second, it's totally free. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's the biggest advantage. It it does the same thing which other systems do, but for a free system it has a fairly good gui yeah but does not scale on uh, limited users yeah scaling actually i think i i presume scaling is an issue that they are addressing because every time you see the forums you no know, they keep saying no no we are working on it next release we will be able to support me uh, 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 so many customers active we are deploying it in active networks abroad and all that so there is lot of talk especially in countries uh, in eu you no know, apparently there are some big clients who have given um, uh, permission to deploy using keycloak So I think it, the product is maturing. In the last six months, I'm seeing a lot of uptake. But I wanted to bring this to uh, people's uh, notice because I found it a very useful framework for small developers. Because for us, you know, uh, developing a security system is a huge, mighty task. So we can exploit something which is already available, and you can. It is. It, it, it's a confidence-boosting measure when you approach a customer. any other question so keylog stores all this configuration in back end which database uh keylog stores the data on your own network so if you have if you have an ldap it will store everything basically it stores everything in json yeah it doesn't store anything in any uh, sophisticated database everything is in json if you want to deploy a local system it will say store it in your local json otherwise it will store it on whatever if you are using an ldap you have configured ldap azure whatever it is whatever system you have it will configure in that okay existing backend okay so you don't have to define your own backend for keylog basically it's just json actually it looks uh, very sophisticated and all that ui na as actually it's just a set of rest apis and a json file that's all yeah the, uh, whatever you configure at the back end it generates a json only that's what you showed yeah and it's all in the local system right yeah we have access to yeah 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 absolutely you get by this import export business and all i was doing na that is uh, uh, actually my server is deployed in aws but i also have a local uh, key clock on my pc so there you can simply uh, keep the json on your local okay thanks any any other questions
so if you want uh, whatever information uh, uh, i find useful no for example i had given one blog link right there are some more things which i found useful for example there are there is some um, installation guide and then there is some faq for the configure how to configure the admin console those links i will add to this ppt and i will share it so that you will have a at least you have an entry point that would be helpful thanks yeah i'll do that i'll do that. i'll do that. okay that's it from my side anybody wants to say anything else yeah i'm thanks thanks for delivering this is very useful narada okay so i think you are good so i have one question yeah so what's the difference between why we use for pick up can we go for jwt right you can you can but the biggest advantage is the gui gui supports if you see the idea of uh, uh, keycloak the best advantage to understand from keycloak is you know you can scale uh, your product from a small uh, uh, how can i explain this okay let us say i have a customer who is only a one a one pc one uh, user one uh, um, region small kind of customer he has only two three people working in his office he doesn't have a big uh, security system so those kind of guys keycloak it will allow you to define a username password um, authentication system or if you are um, uh, targeting an enterprise customer you configure your um, enterprise uh, credentials or you want to bypass all this you want to use social media login you have so this is the biggest advantage of keycloak it allows you to seamlessly move from one authentication to another authentication with no code okay and you know the integration keylock to pre ip no i have not tried yeah okay uh, I, 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 i i i try i will let you know yeah because uh, maximum people keylock with pre ip they use i know i know i i i i've thought about it actually um uh, until now no i have used key it look only on aws i'm not yet used it on the, the microsoft side of things uh, but uh, i i i i probably will will have to do it shortly when i get into it i will share more information okay. anything else okay that's it yep, yep. Thanks, thank you thanks. thank you all thank you everybody mm -hmm.